It's the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Let's uh, head straight to our second conversation where we look about the phones that's been stolen by Brigadier General Jarofaru, uh, a, a former official, 10.9 billion naira from the 13 billion naira Koyi loot. And that will be the crux of our conversation. Now, since last year, Nigerians have witnessed the very uh, public back and forth between the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, that's the EFCC, and the Director of, uh, of Finance and Accounts in the Office of the National Security Advisor, General Jafaru Mohammed, with the anti corruption watchdog, seizing Mohammed's property and Mohammed accusing the EFCC of a, watch, a witch hunt. Uh, the latest is that the Brigadier General Jafaru Mohammed has been revealed as a top military officer and he's been fingered in the latest seizure by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Now, on Tuesday, the FCC had presented details of 24 properties worth 10.9 billion forfeited to the federal government by the military officer, including uh, late General Aminu Kanu. Though the commission did not give the name of the officer, findings have linked the forfeited feature to Mohammed. Now, currently, the director of finance and administration in the office of the National Security Advisor, Mohammed, was appointed by the EFCC uh, in 2017 under Ibrahim Magu to take charge of the finance of the National Intelligence Agency, that's the NIA, after 13 billion belonging to a spy agency was found in Lagos apartment. I'm sure you remember that conversation. The commission had at that time taken charge of the bank accounts operated by Nigerians foreign intelligence service. The recovered loot made of uh, 43.5 million dollars. Uh, we're talking about 27,800 pounds and 23.2 million naira was found hidden inside an apartment uh, at the, uh, the tower in Ikoi by operators of the EFCC uh, in April. Now it explains the decision to get an interim for future order to seize the eight choice landed property allegedly owned by the Director of Finance and Accounts of the National Security Advisor, uh, talking about General Mohammed. Well, we have to head straight to the conversation. I mean, the story is almost endless, but let's uh, look at how all of this because it's quite confusing. And we have talked about, uh, you remember very well that this administration has been very strong with the fight against corruption. And it's part of the premise that led them to win this election. Of course, the campaign has been strong on uh, the fight against corruption. We do have guests joining the conversation. Uh, Biodu Shumumi is a public affairs analyst. It's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning. Uh, we also have Abdullahi. Uh, Mohammed Abdullahi is a public affairs analyst as well, and he will be helping us to make sense of all of this. Thank you very much, Sean. Good morning, Nigeria. Thanks uh, for having me. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to put out this question, and uh, it would be directed to Biodun Shawomi and Abdullahi Mohammed. The question is how can this happen without being noticed? Should we blame this on the accounting system of the government? I mean, the funds that were looted being relooted. Uh, in the first instance, you know, the amazing thing about this is no one has proved that the 13 billion NIA funds were looted funds to start with. Uh, because by the nature of the way intelligence agency, particularly ones dealing with external issues, operate is that they hardly keep money in the bank because they don't want those money to be traced or people they are funding for one external activity in defense of our country to be traced by foreign countries. Yes, um, the money was kept in the flat in the body, but nobody has proved till now um, that that money you know, was actually looted. Nobody has been processed through the criminal justice system you know, for that humongous amount of money found kept uh, in a flag. That is the first um, um, interesting angle to this. But the agency responsible for um, prosecuting people for financial crimes actually uh, took, a, took control of this money and only for the same agency to loot the old money. You know, almost the old money. I mean, you're talking of um, 
uh, about 11 billion out of 13 billion. So what is left? Then you ask yourself that, look, when you take over um, an exhibit, uh, which is what the money is, is an exhibit, um, why or how is it possible that it is only one person uh, that Jafaru Mohammed uh, that will be in custody of that without the knowledge, you know, of other people. Um, for me, that is very curious. It's like going to a police station and claim that it's only the desk officer that knows about what is in the um, um, exhibit room or the lack of accounting, you know, for things in the exhibit room. That is not correct. We know that the area commander will know about it, the DPO will know about it. Um, the desk officer on each shift will know about it uh, because uh, a handover will be done. So now you ask yourself, this money is not kept with Jafar uh, in his own personal house. It's kept uh, in the custody of EFCC, whether in the bank or in the safe house. So how could it be that Jafar may be the only one with um, access to it, even though other people have knowledge, you know, of it. It's just, you know, a tip of the iceberg. I don't think we've gotten uh, to the end of this. And there are, obviously, there may be other people culpable, you know, in the heart of looting this money. Well, how will Jafaru be able to move the whole money um, just like that if they are not kept in the bank? If they are kept in the bank, how come that the, the banks fail to report that a large amount of money is being moved, you know, uh, when the law actually provides that it should be reported to the same EFCC. And how come the EFCC investigator, you know, failed to pick up on this? Or the chief executive of EFCC, EFCC itself called the chairman. How come they failed, you know, to pick up on this term? You cannot have custody of 13 billion naira and then not know anything about his movement. I think other people need to be called in, including Magu that appointed uh, Brigadier General, including the current um, Chief Executive Director of Operations. They need to explain what they know about it. It is impossible for one person, you know, to actually move this kind of money uh, through our system or out of any building, you know, without uh, the other organs of them, um, other operatives of um, the agency knowing about it. So okay. we have not seen the end of it. And I don't believe that the EFCC should be allowed to investigate this matter because otherwise they will be investigating themselves. You know, it's like asking, you know, somebody alleged to have committed fraud, you know, to, to, to investigate itself. The either special fraud unit of the Nigerian police force or the ICPC should be mandated, you know, to investigate um, uh, this very alleged um, theft of a humongous amount of it shouldn't be EFCC that should be investigating this. Okay, so let's also have Mohammed Abdullahi uh, share his thoughts on this. And although uh, we also know that the reports are saying that the EFCC named Jafaru as, uh, you know, involved him in all of this, uh, that's what the reports are saying. But uh, the question that we're asking now is, if this is anything to go by, how... Do we, how did this happen without being on notice? And how do we blame this? Who should we blame this on? Should it be on the system of government, the accounting system? I mean, where funds, we say that we have looted funds that have been recovered. Uh, is the system really, really that bad? Should we blame it on the government? Should we blame it on the entire process? Uh, let's share your thoughts on that, Mohammed Abdullahi. Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I think while Mr. Biodun has laid uh, a very good foundation of the story, I will also include that um, for the stories I have seen uh, emanated from the AFCC, uh, there was no particular officer. It was just stated that a serving military officer is alleged to have stolen 10.9 billion naira in which properties have been recovered. So I think we should understand that. A serving military officer, which behoves the question why is Nigerian state, that is my opinion, why is the Nigerian state aiding and abating corruption? Because, like I mentioned earlier, the FEFCC failed to mention this particular officer, this particular serving officer. Probably the journalists have done their investigative work on the ground and are coming out to say is one Brigadier General Jafar Mohammed, which is fine. But I'm saying the, the, the messages from the AFCC itself 
shows that it is a serving military officer. Now, uh, going back to the question specifically, uh, talking about our system. Now, when 43 point something million dollars and other foreign currencies were, you know, were, were, were discovered in Ikoyi as far back as 2017, that, was, that is like five years ago now. What did our law say? What did our law state? How did AFCC took out the custody of the money without returning the money to the National Treasury? Is a big question for everyone to answer. You understand? And for, for a whole whooping five years, one man, or like Mr. Biodun uh, rightly said, people must have the knowledge of siphoning this money. Definitely not one serving military officer. It, can, it is never possible that with our kind of system, just one serving military officer we steal such humongous uh, sum. It is a collaborative effort of those people within that offices or even outside that offices. And I will also agree with what Mr. Biosun suggested, that the EFCC, because this is a case of like, like he mentioned, you, um, uh, the EFCC, this case is embroiled in EFCC's staff, accomplices, taking out this money. So it is not, I don't think it is wise for EFCC to be investigating itself. There should be an outside independent body that should come out, investigate this uh, issue, and tell Nigerians uh, what really happened and the people who are involved in this. We need to start naming and shaming people who are involved in outright theft of national treasury. I was so disappointed by what the EFCC put out uh, last week, mentioned on or, or Monday or Tuesday, mentioned the fact that a serving military, that was, that was the term they used, a serving military officer uh, uh, stole so 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 and this so 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 has been recovered. That is so so shameful, you know? So I think it's very important that at this moment we have an independent investigation that tells us the real deal, the real issues, those people culpable, and the fact that they will face justice. Okay, uh, uh, I'd like to point out, uh, gentlemen, just like you said, Mohammed, um, uh, the EFCC hasn't named anyone. Um, they have not um, taken anyone to court. No one has been convicted yet. Um, so uh, it's a report that we have gotten uh, from a media outlet that has said that from their findings, they are linking, uh, they have found out that the name of the person, uh, the unnamed military officer by the FCC is Jafar. But we are aware, of course, is in public, uh, we've been in public glare, the back and forth between Jafaru uh, seizing his properties, sealing off his buildings and all that before now and looking, getting a court order and uh, Jafaru, um, you know, complaining that uh, this is a witch hunt against him. Um, um, however, uh, bearing in mind that, that we have this circle of uh, security agencies, uh, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, um, you have the National Intelligence Agency, uh, who the money was said to belong. Don't forget, uh, the courts were asking the owners of the money to come forward. And later we heard Mango is saying what uh, the, the NIA has the money, is their money, they were to use it for an operation. Now, you gentlemen, both of you are saying the EFC shouldn't be investigating this. So the question is, who in particular should take up this case. I'll come back to you and be able to show me. Yeah, we have um, different options um, in this matter, but if you will permit me, let me just highlight uh, one important fact. Um, yes, the, uh, the FCC may or may not have mentioned the General Jafar uh, Mohammed, but as the Director of Finance of the FCC, there is no way he will not be culpable in the custody or the movement of the uh, funds that can never be denied. But, but you know, all, all, all this, all this is down to subject to uh, uh, being convicted by a court to say the man stole is a court who has to say guilty. So all we're doing no, now no, is conjecturing, or in the, or in the realm of speculation or allegations. No, the issue is not even about stealing. The issue is about the safe custody of the alleged missing funds. There is no way the director of finance of ESCC will not know where this money is stored. You know, that is a fact. It does not mean he's the one um, that actually stole the money, but he should know where the money is stored. He should know about the movement of such funds. And we should never forget that there is also the federal government directive, you know, that funds should be kept with CBN under the single treasury uh, system. No single agency is allowed, you know, to keep 
front. So therefore, as director of finance, uh, he has some explanations. It does not mean he's the one or uh, that actually looted or no one can prove that until processed through the criminal justice system. But now back to your question on who should investigate this. We have three options, you know. Uh, one is to ensure that this investigation is carried out, you know, by a, 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 a panel of private investigators. We should include, you know, um, retired judges, uh, members of the Nigerian Bar Association, um, uh, Including journalists, uh, they should have a role in uh, investigating that. That 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 would be a very very independent uh, investigation panel. But when we if we don't want to do that, we have two other options. There are other two anti fraud agencies in Nigeria. One is ICPC, um, which uh, can also be mandated to do that. The other is the serious fraud special fraud unit. Uh, based at Milvetin Rodikoi uh, of the Nigerian Police Force. They could also be made to investigate that. I understand some people may be concerned about using the SF, knowing that the pool of officers working in the EFCC were actually from the Nigerian Police Force. So that is why I'll be suggesting even a panel um, of um, independent, retired judges, reputable judges, lawyers, and journalists you know, to be constituted. Uh, we've seen what was done in the case of the panel set up in Lagos to look at the n and protest in Lagos. We've seen that they've done justice to it um, significantly. So I don't think EFCC should be allowed to investigate itself. And by extension, if we, if we want, we may even exclude the special fraud unit because of um, uh, it's from the Nigerian police force. We may consider either ICPC or uh, independent panel. I don't think the National Assembly itself should be allowed to investigate it because they have failed in their oversight function. So therefore, if they have failed in their oversight functions over the ESCC on this matter, uh, why should they be made you know, to look... Okay, we, we, ha we, have to, we have to pull the plugs at this time. But quickly, uh, Mr. Mohammed, um, it was really public, you know, the, 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 the ongoing, uh, the back and forth between the two uh, groups, um, uh, the EFCC recovered property, the seized property from this man, you know, they sealed off his, his, uh, his uh, properties. And um, he wrote to Aboka Malami SEN, the Attorney General of the Federation, alleging a witch hunt. Now, why, if the EFCC, if this report is true, the report that we are citing, um, that this man is, is the one they are talking about, why didn't they just mention his name? Very quickly, in one sentence, please. Yes, that is what I mentioned earlier in my statement uh, of the fact that uh, the Nigerian system and the Nigerian state as a whole is aiding and abating criminal activities. Now, if you are, if you are sealing someone's property and you, are, you have the fact that these properties are proceeds of looted funds, why are you not naming the person? You know, why are you using the term a serving military officer? That's, that's, like, that, that's like taking Nigerians for a ride, taking Nigerians for fools, seriously. So, you know, we have to ensure our system is rigid enough to withstand and say the fact as it is. Okay, we, we have to go. It seems well, to be aiding and abating criminals. We have to go. We have to go. Thank you very much, gentlemen. But it's also important we point out that Plus TV Africa is citing a report that is alleging that the military officer being referred to by the EFCC in this 13, missing 13 billionaire um, uh, loot is... is uh, Jafar Mohammed, and of course we'll be waiting for the agency to officially announce to verify and to confirm that that report is true. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you, thank you very much. And well, that's the size of the conversation. If you missed out on any part of it, it's alright to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you subscribe to YouTube channels of Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Nessie Hopeful to have a fantastic Friday. Definitely. And I'm Kofi Bartels. See you on Monday. Good morning.